Hi, my name is Father Mike Schmitz and this is Essential Presents. So a question that I'm asked a lot is, Father, how come when it comes to Holy Communion that we can't offer Holy Communion to those who are not Catholic and those who are not practicing Catholics? Because if you ever invite your friends to, like, to Mass with you, uh, sometimes it can be really, really painful in that moment where it's like, oh, I'm sorry, you, you can't go up to receive Holy Communion or maybe you, can, maybe you can go up and receive a blessing kind of a thing, but it becomes this really awkward and actually painful moment. In fact, for those who show up, if you've ever, if you're not Catholic, you've been to a Catholic Mass, sometimes it touches on the thing that hurts us the most, or one of the bigger wounds that a lot of us experience, and that wound is a fear of rejection. It feels like sometimes uh, you go to Mass, and in the middle of the Mass, here at this very, very important moment, it seems like all the people around me are saying, oh, by the way, you're not good enough. Now, that's how it feels, but that question, is that what the Church is saying? And the answer, of course, is going to be no. This, this whole deal goes back to the very beginning. It goes back to the very beginning of Christianity. <laughs> one of the problems with the Mass, if there's a problem with the Mass, one of the problems with the Mass is that it's always been what you might call an insider deal. That it's always only been for those who have been fully initiated into the Catholic Church. Even from the very, very beginning, first centuries of the Church. Um, though even those preparing to enter into full communion with the Church, and those get, preparing to get baptized, all those sacraments, even if they were intending full communion, if they weren't already in full communion, what would happen is, um, right after the Liturgy of the Word, uh, right before the prayers of the faithful, people, they'd be escorted out for the, so they could go on and learn more about Christianity and Jesus. Um, while, while the rest of the, the congregation, the community that was fully initiated, would have the Eucharist. So again, it's just like, like, wow, that's all the way back to the first centuries of Christianity. It's always been an insider deal. And yet at the same time, you can be like, that seems incredibly exclusive and in no way very welcoming. And again, it touches on that wound. This is why it hurts us so much, that wound of the fear of rejection. In fact, I remember years ago, uh, there was a man who was getting ready to be ordained a deacon um, in the Catholic Church, and he was a convert. Uh, later on in life, and so his mom was still not Catholic, and, and she was having a tough time because she's saying, at my son's ordination, I will not be able to go up and receive Holy Communion. That seems so uh, painful, so hurtful, so um, inhospitable and unwelcoming. And so the to-be deacon, now currently deacon, said, hey, would you come down and have dinner with my family? And you can explain to my mom why. <laughs> and I'm like, what? Dude, you know why? And he said, yeah, but she won't listen to me. I'm her son. You'll, she'll listen. Maybe she'll listen to you. I'm like, fine. We had a great conversation. This woman just loves the Lord so much. And I really understood and could feel her, um, her pain. Not only of that you know, fear of rejection and not being welcomed, but also just the pain of like, this is a big deal, day for my son and I want to fully be part of it. Because how she envisioned Holy Communion was, this means you're welcome. If you can't receive, this means you're not welcome here. And I was like, oh my gosh, that makes sense. And I can, again, I can understand that pain, but that's not what the church means when we receive Holy Communion. Here's what happens, you know, as you know, um, we walk forward and the priest holds up the host and says, the body of Christ, or the person holds up the chalice, says, the blood of Christ. What they're saying is, this is the body of Christ. This is not just a symbol of him, not just a remembrance of him, although we do it in remembrance of him, this is him. This is the body, blood, soul, divinity of Jesus. We believe that truly is Jesus. And when we say amen to that, that doesn't just mean like, oh, thanks. <laughs> it doesn't mean, mm hmm it's a Hebrew word, amen, that means I believe. But what's underneath that I believe is, I stake my life on that. If that's not truly Jesus, my life is forfeit. Where she felt or saw as uh, not being welcomed, we're like, oh, no, no. But we're trying to extend you, it sounds so maybe condescending, I don't mean it condescendingly, trying to extend you a mercy of not bringing you to the point where you would say something that you didn't truly believe. Because she's like, I don't believe that. I don't believe that truly is Jesus in the Eucharist. I'm like, exactly. And so we don't want you to come forward and unknowingly say something that you didn't believe. But what if someone says, well, you know, I'm not Catholic, but I do believe that's true. Like, I've read John chapter 6. I know that he said that's truly his body and truly his blood. Like, I read the Bible. I know that really is him. It's not a symbol of him. It really is him. So can I receive Holy Communion? It seems like you're saying I can't do that, just treating me like a, like a second-class Christian. Let's try to address that by looking at this analogy. Uh, take Jack and Jill. Jack and Jill are in love with each other. Uh, they've been dating for years and they just, they really are good for each other and they're really good to each other and they truly do love each other. Now, as we know, the fullest expression of romantic love between a man and woman is the sexual embrace. And the church says, okay, but Jack and Jill, if you're not married, 
you can't enter the sexual embrace. Now, if they were to look back at the church and say, are you kidding me? Like, we, are you saying we don't love each other? Are you saying that we're not good enough to enter the sexual embrace? The church would look and say, no, 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 that's, 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 not, that's not what's being said. The sexual embrace is an expression of a pre-existing reality. That's what it's meant to be, that Jack and Jill have already been united in matrimony. And now, because of that union, they can express that, express that union through the sexual embrace. Very, very similarly, when it comes to Holy Communion, that means that pre-existing reality is, not only do I believe that thing, I've been received into the body of Christ. One of the things that's so important about Holy Communion is it's not just communion, not just communion between me and Jesus there. Holy Communion also means communion with the whole body of Christ, with the whole family of God, that I'm actually united to everyone. It's one of the reasons why at the Easter Vigil, um, when our, the people who are becoming Catholic, uh, they come forward. They don't just say, oh, I believe this, so I'm going to receive it. They come forward and they present themselves and they profess the faith. They say this, they say, I believe and profess all that the Catholic Church teaches, believes, and proclaims to be revealed by God. And the bishop says, in our case of the bishop at the cathedral, the bishop says, now I now receive you into the Catholic Church. Just like when Jack says to Jill, I take you as my bride, and Jill says to Jack, I take you as my husband. They offer and they're received, and now there's a union. But to do that ahead of time is to act like there's a union when there hasn't been a union yet. Does that make sense? Last thing here. It still hurts, doesn't it? Like you go to a, a funeral and you go to a wedding and you maybe invited someone there who's not Catholic and you get to that point where they can't receive Holy Communion. It's just like, ah, oh, ouch. I think that's good. And I don't try, I'm not, again, I'm not trying to say this condescendingly. I think we need that pain. Because at the Last Supper, when Jesus gave us the Eucharist, he also prayed a specific prayer. And that prayer was, Father, may they be one as you and I are one, so that the world may see them and give you glory. At the Last Supper, when Jesus gave us the Eucharist, he prayed that we wouldn't be divided. And here's the thing, we are divided and most of us don't care. Honestly, in fact, I know some people who even say, hey, yeah, the divisions in the body of Christ is so good. It means we're so diverse. It means we have so much more, many more expressions of, and yet Jesus said, no, don't be divided. Father, I pray that they may be one. And again, for the most part, we don't care that we're divided until when? Until that moment in the Catholic Mass when it's painfully obvious that we're not united and that we are divided. If for no other reason why we need to preserve this, I guess the, the ban, I guess, on intercommunion is because we need to experience that pain so that we can be motivated to strive after union. This is not the last word about like, so we're divided, that's it. No, 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 it's the opposite. It's we're divided and that stinks. We're divided and that hurts. So what? So we should work for communion, that we need to work for the union of the body of Christ because Jesus himself prayed for this. And if we're not praying for this and working towards it, then we're not doing what he wants. So at that moment in, in Holy Communion where they're sitting next to the person who can't receive and it's all painful for everybody, rather than be like, this is so stupid, I say, just pray. Pray for the union of all Christians. Pray that all of our brothers and sisters in Christ may one day be gathered around one altar with one shepherd and one Holy Communion. That's all I got to say. From all of us here at Ascension Presents, my name is Father Mike. God bless. Please. I don't, please, please like, subscribe, comment below. Okay.